All right. So in the last lecture, uh, we saw the Shannon code, and we saw that it's it's an optimal code. It gets you close to the entropy of uh, the source, right? Uh, so now the question is, do we need to? So so is is it done? Or have we completely solved the problem of variable length compression? Uh, not exactly, because uh, if, if you recall, the way we constructed the Shannon code was by giving the code word lengths for each each symbol, and then we used the the prefix the, the crafts inequality, the constructive part of crafts inequality, uh, to show that to say that okay there exists a code which with with these particular lengths, right? But actually determining the code words is quite complicated. You need to look at the entire tree and then uh, identify individual code words and this is computationally a bit complex so so our goal will be to uh, determine more and more efficient compression algorithms which still get you a rate or, or expected length close to the entropy okay so the the first code that we'll start off with uh, is the huffman code and the huffman code is basically a recursive construction uh, in fact, the Huffman code is, is the optimal variable length code. So, assuming that you are given p of x, if you know p of x exactly, uh, then the code constructed, the Huffman code, achieves the minimum expected length over all possible variable length codes. And and the and the way we construct the Huffman code is recursively. So, the basic idea is let's let's suppose that we have just two symbols, okay, alpha 1 and alpha 2. Okay. So this is our alphabet. Now what is the optimal uh, variable length code in this particular case? Uh, it's pretty simple. Both of them should obviously have uh, length 1. So we can assign the code word 0 for alpha 1 and 1 for alpha 2. Right. So let's try to generalize it. Suppose that we have three symbols alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha 3 and without loss of generality we will assume that alpha 1 has uh, uh, has has probability greater than or equal to alpha 2 and the probability of alpha 3 is, is less than or equal to that of alpha 2. Right. So, probability P of alpha 1 is greater than or equal to P of alpha 2, which is greater than or equal to P of alpha 3. So, we have three symbols, right. So, the idea behind Huffman codes is to recursively try to get to, uh, is, is to recursively construct and bring it down to two symbols. So, suppose that I merge symbols alpha 2 and alpha 3, I will create a super symbol alpha 2 prime which has probability p of alpha 2 plus p of alpha 3. So, p of alpha 2 prime is p of alpha 2 plus p of alpha 3, right. So, we can think of alpha 2 as a super symbol which says that the actual symbol is either alpha 2 or alpha 3, you don't know which, okay. So, now so now we've brought the problem down to so to, to to just two symbols for which we know what the optimal compression algorithm is, right? But at least so, so now corresponding to alpha two prime. So so we'll assume that this is alpha one, this is alpha two prime, which is the super symbol. So now you need to determine uh, the code word corresponding to alpha two and alpha three. And if you have just two symbols, then given alpha 2 prime, then you know what the code should be, right? So it should be alpha 2 prime, so this should be alpha 2 and alpha 3. So now let's let's try to solve a slightly more complicated example where we have say four symbols, right? Uh, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 and alpha 4. And alpha 4. Okay. So we know that this is the optimal code for three symbols without loss of generality. Okay. 
So now suppose that we have two symbols. Uh, I'll again uh, order this. So alpha, the probability of alpha 1 is greater than probability of alpha 2, greater than probability of alpha 3, which is greater than probability of alpha 4. Okay. So now I will merge the symbols corresponding to the least probability alpha 3 and alpha 4 and determine an alpha 3 prime. Right. Uh, now, now how do we construct the code? So given alpha 1, alpha 2, if, I, if we are given just three symbols, then we know that this is the optimal structure. Right. So, so does this mean that would this be the optimal code for four symbols? No, not necessarily, right? And this really depends on what the probability of alpha 3 is. So if the probability of alpha 3 is less than alpha 3 prime is less than that of alpha 2 and alpha 1, then this would be the then this would be uh, the, the optimal code for four symbols. Whereas because because here in this particular case we assume that alpha 1 is greater than or equal to alpha 2 is greater than or equal to alpha 3. So if alpha 3 prime has probability less than that of alpha 1 and alpha 2, then you just replace alpha 3, you extend alpha 3 uh, to, to, new, to, new, to two new symbols. But on the other hand, if alpha 3 prime has the highest probability, so p of alpha 3 prime is larger than p of alpha 1 and p of alpha 2, then, then you should be introducing the two new branches at this particular point at alpha 1. So then the code word would be, then the code tree would look something like this. And so that is the basic idea behind Hoffman code and the construction itself works as follows. So it's a recursive construction. So you order the, the symbols in decreasing order of probability alpha n say alpha m you combine the the, sim, the two symbols of least probability to give an alpha m prime uh, alpha 1 2 alpha m and alpha prime m minus 1 right so, so so you reduce the alphabet from m to m minus 1 symbols by merging alpha m and alpha m minus 1 so now after merging these probabilities need not be in the decreasing order right so it's possible that alpha m minus 1 prime has probability greater than alpha m minus 2 so you rearrange these symbols uh, to get an alpha 1 prime, alpha 2 prime and so on, alpha m minus 1, uh, that will be called this alpha 1 double prime, alpha 2 double prime, all the way up to alpha m minus 1 double prime. And then again you merge, so once these are in decreasing order after rearranging them, you once again merge the two uh, symbols of least probability to get an alpha m minus 2 double prime so now you reduce the alphabet down to uh, down by 2 and so on you keep doing this till you end up with uh, alpha so alpha 1 multiple primes and alpha 2 okay, m primes right and for this you can always assign and, and this would correspond to the root of the code tree. So what you do is for this super symbol you assign the code word 0, for this super symbol you assign the code word 1 and maybe alpha, uh, maybe the second symbol is a super symbol which, which is obtained by combining two other symbols. So for this particular super symbol you identify code, uh, the symbol 0 and for this it's 1. So the code word corresponding to this particular super symbol would be 1 0 whereas the code word corresponding to this super symbol would be 1 1 and then so on. So basically what we are doing is essentially you are looking at the complete code tree 
and and you are still identifying uh, uh, identifying a code word you are st you are still mapping code words to different nodes in this particular tree but unlike the shannon code where we actually started with the root and then went down to different leaves we are actually starting we are using a bottom up approach where we are starting with sort of the leaves of the tree and then we are going upwards so we are starting with two leaves and then we are going up we are combining symbols and so on and we are going all the way up to the root right so that is uh, the basic construction of Huffman codes and, and I encourage you to work with small examples try deriving the Huffman code for various prob probability mass functions yourself uh, so for example chapter 5 has a number of uh, examples chapter 5 in Core and Thomas has, has a number of good examples that you can work with okay so so what guarantees can we give for the Huffman again for the Huffman code you can show that the expected length of the Huffman code is, is again upper bounded by h of x plus 1 which is which is similar to the guarantee that we can give using a Shannon code but in but unlike the Shannon code we have an even stronger guarantee that is so, so we are not sure what the expected length of the Shannon code must be we know that it must be somewhere between h of x and h of x plus 1 it's, it's the same for the Huffman code but what we can say is that no matter which variable no matter what prefix free code you choose in fact no matter what uniquely decodable code you choose the Huffman code will always have an expected length which is less than or equal to that of this code so for all possible uniquely decodable code c the length of the Huffman code is less than or equal to the length of c the expected length of c that's a very powerful statement uh, so now let's see a different code okay uh, so we've seen the Huffman code which we now know is optimal you can't do any better than the Huffman code but even then uh, we'll see and we'll see another code and we'll see how it is useful uh, in uh, in certain applications so this is this is similar to the construction is pretty similar to that of uh, the Shannon code uh, this code is called the Shannon Fano Elias, Elias code and 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 here and from now on we assume that the alphabet is just the set of m integers so assuming that the alphabet size is m uh, so, sorry so, so assuming that the alphabet size is m we will assume that the alphabet is 0 1 2 up to m minus 1 okay. and we'll see how this is helpful uh, later on okay, so we'll so we'll map each symbols we'll introduce some arbitrary uh, total ordering on the symbols and we'll identify it with the numbers 0 1 2 all the way up to m minus 1 okay and and associated with this we're given a probability mass function p right so so corresponding to this we define the pdf uh, uh, the, the sorry the, the cumulative distribution function as f of x to be the, the sum of all probabilities of, of the symbols uh, which are less than x strictly less than x right so this is our cdf i'll define something called a modified cdf which is the cdf plus p of x by 2 so f bar of x uh, is, is f of x plus p of x by 2 Okay. And, and what the Shannon Fano Elias, Elias code does is it takes uh, it first you first for, so for each uh, symbol x you compute uh, L of x which is going to be the length of uh, sequence the, the, the length of the code word corresponding to x and we choose this to be seal of log 1 over p of x plus 1 right so in the Shannon code we chose this to be Sealing seal of log 1 over p of x. Now we are going to add another bit. Okay. And the way you are going to construct the code is by taking the first L of x bits of the binary representation of f bar of x. So you compute f of f bar of x and then you take the first uh, L of x bits of, of this particular 
number okay and that is going to be your code word so assuming that uh, l of x is in binary is 0 0.1011101010 and uh, and uh, so so this is f bar of x so suppose that this is f bar of x and and maybe l of x turns out to be 5 then you take the first 5 bits and this is going to be your code word right so 10110 is going to be the code word right so this is a simple enough construction it's it's very reminiscent of the shannon of the construction of the shannon code except that now you know exactly how to construct the code word. In the Shannon code, you have to start with the tree and then uh, identify the nodes in a clever fashion. This is, this is just a simple computation. You just compute f bar of x and then truncate it up to L of x bits. Right? Okay. But, but this is one construction. But we are not even sure, but we are not sure what the rate is. And we are not sure if this code is ever going to be pre prefix free. So let's show that this, this is indeed prefix free. Now, since we are truncating f bar of x to uh, using l of x bits, we know that the difference or the error between the truncated version and f bar of x is, is less than 1 over 2 to the l of x. Right? So that's, that's fairly simple. But, but because of the way we've chosen l of x, Right? This is log 1 over p of x plus 1. Right? So it's less than log 1 over p of x. Uh, and, and therefore, this is less than p of x divided by 2. Okay? So, so far, so good. Now, now let's, let's look at uh, an example of, of some PDF. Okay? So, so let's suppose that we have a CDF. So the CDF in general is going to be a staircase function. So this is 0, this is 1, the staircase function, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So what is f bar of x? So for a particular symbol uh, x, this is going to be the midpoint, right? So Right. So, so for example, f bar of two is is so f bar of two is p of the zero plus p of one plus p of two divided by two. So this is f of x, and so this is going to be f bar of two. The midpoint is going to be. Uh, f bar of 1 and so on. Right? This is going to be f bar of 3. Right? Uh, so that's fine. So, so what we are going to do now is going to uh, is that we are, we, our goal is to show that this is this this code that we have constructed is prefix v. And and to do that we will assign to each symbol or each code word an interval uh, in 0, 1. Right, we are going to assign an interval in 0, 1. And the interval is basically going to be f of x plus 1 and f of x. So it is going to be this particular interval. So f bar of x uh, corresponds to the midpoint of the interval. So corresponding to each x we will identify the interval f of x and f of x plus 1 and f bar of x is going to be exactly the midpoint of this interval. So the code word uh, which is obtained by truncating f bar of x now this since this is less than p since the difference is less than p of, p of x over 2 the code word which also corresponds to some real number in 0 1 corresponds to some point in in the lower half of this particular interval right so it's going to be is somewhere in this sub interval so 
x bar of x truncated to l of x uh, is some point which lies in the interval f of x and uh, f bar of x. Okay, so that's observation number one. So now, if we wanted to show that uh, the code word is prefix free, so, sorry, if the code is prefix free, then we have to make sure that no code word is a suffix of any other code word, right? So now, now, now let's see what the, the all possible suffixes of a particular code word can correspond to, right? Uh, so all possible suffixes of a particular code word, so these are all possible binary sequences. Let's assume that 1010. So maybe this is one particular code word, right? So all possible suffixes of these are 001000 and 10110 and so on, right? So this is my code word and and the set of all possible so this code word can be identified with some real number right let's call it c so all possible suffixes of this particular sequence corresponds to all uh, numbers which are between c and c plus 1 over 2 to the l of x Right. Uh, you see why that's the case because all, all possible sequences so, so so what is so since we have these numbers so each sequence corresponds each binary sequence corresponds to a real number uh, the largest so among all possible suffixes of f bar of x which is the largest suffix it is going to be 0 0.1010 and all ones right all ones and that corresponds to this particular number, the number plus 1 over 2 to the L of x. Right? So as long as we sh as long as we show that no other code word lies in this particular interval, we are done. As long as no other no the code word corresponding to any other symbol lies outside the interval c to c plus 1 over 2, 2 to the power L of x, we are done. But what is c plus 1 over 2 to the l of x uh, but what is uh, 1 over 2 to the l of x 1 over 2 to the l of x is at most p of x divided by 2 right so let's go back to our picture over here uh, let me make this a little bit bigger right so let's right so this is this height is f of x, this height is f of x, f of x plus 1, right, and uh, this is f bar of x. We know that the code word, right, so the code word is going to correspond to some number which lies in this particular interval of length p of x over 2. It's going to be it's, it's strictly within this interval, right? And 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 certainly the set of all possible suffixes of this particular code word. So maybe the code word lies somewhere over here. The set of all possible suffixes lie in this particular interval, which is between here and this point plus p of x over two. right so therefore the code word corresponding to every symbol the code word and all of its suffixes are going to lie strictly within this interval between f of x and f of x plus 1 so corresponding to each sequence, 
So for all x, the code word corresponding to x, which is of course a binary sequence, but we are associating that with a real number, which is 0 point the binary sequence, c of x and suffixes of c of x all lie in in the interval f of x and f of x plus 1 and and for each and for different x's uh, the these intervals are all disjoint right? and therefore no code word is going to be a suffix, a suffix of any other code word. sorry no code word is going to be a prefix of any other code word right? and therefore the shannon fano alias code is going to be a prefix free code now what is the expected length going to be we've chosen l of x to be to be equal to c of log 1 over p of x plus 1 which is less than or equal to log 1 over p of x plus 2 and therefore the entropy and, and therefore the expected length is, is, is going to is upper bounded by h of x plus 2 in the worst case it could be close to h of x plus 2 so, so clearly uh, this while this is efficient to encode, uh, it's it's fairly efficient to encode, but uh, the expected length is is obviously going to be worse than that of the Huffman code. Right? So, what is the point? So, is there any point to studying the Shannon Fano LIS code at all? Since we already have a good enough code. So, to answer this question, let's look at. Uh, the problem that we are really trying to solve that is coding over n symbols. So, we have a sequence of n symbols and we want to compress this sequence of n symbols. We will assume that the sequence is IID and our goal is to compress a file which consists of n IID symbols. Right? So, if we do symbol wise encoding of the sequence that is we design a Huffman code for script x then we can achieve a compressed length which is at most h of x n times h of x plus n right so there is a gap to entropy in the worst case it could be as large as n times h of x plus n if we do symbol wise of men encoding on the other hand we could take blocks uh, we could take we could treat the entire sequence xn as a single symbol and design a Huffman code on the larger alphabet script x to the n uh, with probabilities p x n. So, this would guarantee that we can achieve an exp a, a compressed length of at most n times h of x plus 1 which is a great improvement, but this is computationally very expensive right because even if we want to compress a single sequence we need to compress all possible code words the encoder has to compute all possible code words this has to be done beforehand uh, but but you need to compute the entire code book which is exponential and whose size is exponential in n right so even designing the code book is is going to be an exponential uh, time uh, is going to have exponential time complexity and even identifying the code word so given a particular sequence you want to be able to encode it efficiently right and to identify the code word belonging to a particular sequence it requires exponential time and, and that is that's not good enough. Right? So, so this is not great and, and the question is can we do better even if we cannot achieve an expected length of n times h of x plus 1 can we do better and in fact it turns out that by some clever manipulations of the the Shannon Fano alias code, we can achieve an expected length of n times h of x plus 2, but the computational complexity is no longer exponential time, we can just reduce it to polynomial time computations. 
and the way we are going to do it is that we are not going to construct the entire code book so given a particular sequence we don't construct unnecessary code words we only want to construct the code word for xn we don't really care what the code word corresponds to corresponding to any other symbol is any other sequence is right okay so to design this uh, which we call so we call this extension the, the so called arithmetic code right i'm going to call this an arithmetic code and and the idea is to represent xn uh, the sequence the raw sequence xn in uh, so so if if the alphabet if x comes from some script x and uh, which without loss of generality we are, we are assuming it to be 1 2 3 up to m minus 1 So we will represent each sequence xn in memory format. So we will represent this in memory format. So, so we have 0 0.x1, x2, x3, x4 up to xn which is going to correspond to some real number right. So this is a real number and it is and it's also between 0 and 1. Okay, so that is fine. Right. So recall that if you want to construct the code word corresponding to a Shannon Fano LIS code, then there are only two things. So basically, all we need are f bar of x and p of x, right? So f bar of x n. So to construct the code word for x n, we need to know what f bar of x n is and what p of x n is and we want to want we want to be able to compute these uh, using uh, using a using just polynomial time not exponential time so we need to compute f bar of x and p of x but equivalently it's enough to construct f of x and p of x and for an id source we can construct for an id sequence we can construct this using a recursive formula so clearly p of xn since it's an iid sequence p of xn is is just the product over all possible uh, i of p of xi so so we can recursively write this as p of xn minus 1 times p of xn and to compute f of xn it turns out that there is this nice recursive formula so f of x superscript n is equal to f of x superscript n minus 1 plus p of x superscript n minus 1 times f of xn right so so firstly you should notice that so so computing p of xn and f of xn is, is pretty easy right and f bar of xn is simply f of xn plus p of n divided by 2 okay, so 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 computations are pretty easy using this recursive formula it just takes linear time uh, for each of these uh, so, sorry not linear yeah so it, so it just takes linear time and uh, of course this is assuming that uh, we have infinite we have a system which does uh, which is infinite precision and we don't need to worry about uh, floating point uh, problems right okay so now let's let's verify the second step so this step of the recursion right that f of xn is f of xn minus 1 plus p xn minus 1 times f of xn right so so we have f of xn which is some overall possible a n which is less than x n right so so the reason why we use this particular notation we represented x n in memory format is because we so is so, is so that we have a total ordering on on these possible sequences right okay so now we have f of x n which is the set of all a n which is which are less than x n of p of a n right. I will split this 
into two into two different uh, terms one i'll sum over all possible a n which are less than x n minus 1 0 so, so suppose that we have 0 0.0132 1 so suppose that that the sequence is 0 1 3 2 1 right uh, this is this is xn right? so i'll i'll split all possible uh, sequences which are less than xn in the following form i'll split into all possible sequences which are less than 0 1 3 2 0 and then all possible sequences which are greater than this but less than 0 1 3 2 1 okay. well, let's, let's say that this is 0 1 3 2 3 okay 0 so the ones which so all possible sequences less than 0 1 2 3 0 and all possible sequences which are greater than greater than or equal to 0 1 2 3 0 but less than 0 1 3 2 3 okay. uh, but the sequences which are greater than 0 1 3 2 0 and less than 0 1 3 2 3 are just 0 1 3 2 0 0 1 3 2 1 and 0 1 3 2 2 so the second part has only a finite number of terms So this is sum. So the second term is just the sum over all possible a, which are less than x subscript n of p of x n minus one a, right? Okay. So now I'm going to write uh, the first term uh, in a, in a slightly different way. I'm going to split it into all possible sequences right of all possible a n a n minus 1 uh, less than x n minus 1 sum for all possible a n Uh, of p of a n minus 1 times p of a n minus 1 a a n right a n right so this is the first term right uh, but what you will notice is that this p of a n minus 1 a n is p of n minus 1 times p of a n right? because it's an iid sequence and the second term is left as it is n p of x n minus 1 but even here p of x n minus 1 a is p of x n minus 1 times p of a So let's look at the first term. I can minus one less than n minus one. I can take p of a n minus one outside. Uh, multiply this by some overall possible a n of p of a n plus I can take p of x n minus 1 outside times sum over all possible a less than x n of p of a right but but what is but let's look at each term 
So this is sum over all possible a subscript n of p of a subscript n which is 1, right. So this is 1, but what is this equal to? This is f of xn, right. So this is f of xn. Now let us look at the second term. We have p of xn minus 1 times sum over all possible a less than xn of p of a. But this is just f of x subscript. So therefore, we have f of x superscript n to be f of x superscript n minus 1 plus p of x sub superscript n minus 1 times f subscript n. So this can be computed very efficiently uh, using, a, using a recursive formula and, and there are many more advantages of arithmetic codes. Uh, there are many modifications that one can make uh, in particular if, uh, so for example, if, if, if you want to do the, the, the compression in an online fashion where after n, n symbols maybe you get a better estimate of p of x and you want to update. Uh, the probability mass function and construct the code for n plus 1 symbols, then you can do it uh, in a fairly efficient manner and so on. There are, yeah, so, so arithmetic codes are very powerful. Uh, in this, this particular lecture, I only scratched the surface. But, but while the Huffman code is optimal, uh, computing the Huffman code, the, the the n letter Huffman code, the blockwise Huffman code is computationally very expensive uh, and, and using, uh, using uh, these arithmetic codes you can get close to the entropy, it is not optimal but you can still get close to the entropy uh, using a very efficient algorithm, right, okay. So that is it for this particular video.